This hip-hop mogul is the brother of a famous rapper, co-founder of one of the most recognizable record labels in the world, and owns a farm. A fat farm, that is. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be learning more about the life and career of Russell Simmons. I don't want any black records, black film, black television. Black... I want black stars. I want black culture. I want urban society to be American. So I want the biggest influence in American culture to have the biggest piece of the market share. Period. Russell Wendell Simmons was born October 4, 1957, in Queens, New York. He grew up in a middle-class neighborhood, but learned much of his business sense as a marijuana dealer on city streets. Simmons started a sociology degree at City College of New York, and in 1978, he began promoting local hip-hop acts. The next year, he teamed up with his friend Curtis Blow to write the track Christmas Rappin', and the song was a minor success. But if he were right here tonight, he'd say Merry Christmas, and to all, I get down, stop messing around when Curtis Blow is in your town. He eventually left school to focus on his business full-time. Another of Simmons' earliest musical finds was his younger brother's rap trio, Run DMC. My name is Joseph Simmons, but my middle name's Ward, and when I'm rocking on the mic, you should all applaud me, because my real name's Dylan. We got a funny feeling. We rock from the floor up to the ceiling. He helped assemble the group, and they immediately became successful. Simmons was already prominent on the hip-hop scene by 1984. That year, he partnered with Rick Rubin to launch a record label to release music that was mostly being ignored by larger labels. Simmons was the business mind of Def Jam Recordings, while Rubin was more creative on the production end. At the same time, Simmons established Rush Artist Management to handle many of Def Jam's early artists. This organization became the core of his media empire, Rush Communications. In its early days, Def Jam released work by such up-and-coming artists as the Beastie Boys and LL Cool J. These efforts did well, and in 1985, Simmons and Rubin signed a distribution deal with CBS Records. 1985 was also the year Simmons produced a movie called Crush Groove that centered on the label's origin story. What kind of record company do you have? What kind? You know, what type of music? Rap music. What? Rap music. What is rap music? The film featured many of Def Jam's artists and made $20 million at the box office on a $3 million budget. While critics generally hated the project, it was the first time Simmons diversified his business and promoted his artists through different media. No, it's about that time for us to say that we're Run DMC and Jam Master J. However, Simmons and Def Jam aimed to get their music to an even wider audience. In 1986, they teamed their stars Run DMC with rockers Aerosmith to perform a remake of the song, Walk This Way. This move single-handedly brought rap to the mainstream and encouraged pop acts to incorporate hip-hop elements into their music. Def Jam's golden era came with the signing of hardcore hip-hop group Public Enemy. Simmons continued building his brand and credibility on the strength of his artists. What was most striking about his promotional efforts was that the acts he endorsed stayed true to life on the streets in terms of their lyrical content, style of dress, and attitudes. In 1992, Simmons expanded his empire to include a clothing line. Fat Farm combined preppy sensibilities with hip-hop style and was another way for Simmons to promote urban culture. That year, he also started Deaf Comedy Jam to give African-American comedians a platform for their work. In 1996, his production house had its greatest film success when it produced The Nutty Professor starring Eddie Murphy. Daddy, all I'm trying to say is that scientific breakthroughs are occurring all the time. And the only thing about the breakthrough is your ass about to break through the seat of your pants. <laughs> In 1998, Simmons married his longtime girlfriend, model Kimora Lee. She worked with him at Fat Fashions and helped launch the Baby Fat spin-off brand that same year. After years of success, Simmons sold his share of Def Jam to Universal Records for over $100 million in the year 2000. Despite this move, Simmons remained a voice for the urban music community through a variety of pursuits, like Def Poetry Jam and the TV show One World Music Beat. 
In 2004, he sold Fat Farm for $140 million, though his wife stayed on with the company even after they divorced a few years later. Simmons got back into music in 2005 when he formed the Russell Simmons Music Group as a joint venture with Island Def Jam. By 2011, he was worth an estimated $340 million. Aside from his success in business, Simmons has been an active philanthropist for a variety of causes. Russell Simmons is said to understand hip-hop culture better than anyone. His skills as a businessman, talent scout, promoter and marketer have made him a rich man and have ingrained urban music into the American way of life.